At least 20 million people are in the path of Hurricane Laura tonight and half a million more have been ordered to evacuate their homes immediately. This is a live look in Galveston, Texas tonight as we wait for what's to come. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Marlisa Goldsmith and Arkansas will see some impacts from this storm. Meteorologist Nathan Scott is tracking that for us tonight. Nathan. Marlisa, we're seeing the storm continue to strengthen out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Winds are now up to 90 miles per hour. You can see here from the infrared satellite, the storms are really developing around the center of this system as it continues to feed off those warm waters and conditions are favorable for this storm to intensify into a category two by tomorrow morning. And the National Hurricane Center has now said this is going to be a solid category three as it moves towards the Texas and Louisiana border going into tomorrow night and early Thursday morning. Then it continues to track its way right through Arkansas. So we will see significant impacts here in the natural state. Here are the hurricane warnings now in effect for many parishes in Louisiana, also East Texas, tropical storm warnings all the way up now to the Louisiana Arkansas border and that could be extended into southern parts of Arkansas going into tomorrow. Here's three things to know about Laura. We're going to see heavy rain potential of flooding because of several inches of rain from Thursday into Friday. Gusty damaging winds also a possibility and we'll have to be on the lookout for a quick weak tornadoes developing Thursday afternoon, but continuing into the night. I've got a lot to talk about on these impacts and timing coming up a little bit later. Sheriff's, office. Sheriff's deputies in low lying Texas neighborhoods are going door to door to deliver an urgent evacuation warning for people living in Hurricane Laura's path. There are storm shelters in place, but space is limited and everything is made more complicated, of course, by COVID-19. The Houston area is still recovering from the hard lessons of Hurricane Harvey three years ago, and this time the city is determined to prepare for the worst. The rain that Arkansas is expecting to see from this storm system has people in hot springs already loading up sandbags. Take a look at this video here. The city has a history of serious flooding issues, but public works crews say they're prepared. Entergy is also lowering water levels by five inches in Lake Hamilton and nine inches in Lake Catherine. Whatever comes our way, you can always get weather information, including severe weather alerts on the THV 11 app. You can also click near me on the home page to send us pictures of what's happening in your area. It's completely free to download in your app store. Arkansas COVID-19 death toll surpassed 700 today. 15 more people lost their fight with the virus, bringing the state's total to 711. The jump comes as we continue to see relatively lower numbers of new cases. 480 new cases of COVID-19 were reported today. While that's 150 more than yesterday, it's still low compared to the jumps we saw in June and July. But Governor Asa Hutchinson says that may be due to testing numbers. The Arkansas Department of Health wants to see more people get tested, saying turnaround times are much quicker than they were just a few weeks ago. THV 11's Melissa Ziguit spoke with a doctor about how long it takes to get results back and who should be tested. So far this month, more than 143,000 people have been tested for COVID-19 in Arkansas, which is about 4% of the state. But Dr. Jennifer Dillahay at the Arkansas Department of Health would like to see at least 6% of the population tested. We're not where we really could be to do a really good job. Dr. Dillahay believes less people are going in to get tested because testing turnaround times were previously very long. Some people waiting 14 days for results. People may have decided it wasn't helpful for them to get the tests. But Dr. Dillahay wants you to know this has recently changed and the average turnaround time is now about two days. Now those companies have really 
really ramped up their capacity to do the testing. Most testing sites are also reporting less wait times in line to get tested. A spokesperson for UAMS says the lines in the drive through to get tested are steady, but not as long as they once were at the beginning of the pandemic. Dr. Jose Romero encourages anyone who recently traveled out of state or just has a concern they may have been exposed to get a test. The Department of Health will test you at your local health unit if you do not have symptoms. Anybody can walk in, regardless whether you have insurance or not, we will test you. In Little Rock, Melissa Zigowitz, THV 11 News. Melissa, thank you. To find the closest testing location near you and to learn more about COVID-19 testing in Arkansas, just text the word TEST, T-E-S-T, to 501-376-1111 and we'll send that information directly to you. As the state continues to track COVID-19 cases and recoveries, it's raised questions about how cases are classified as recovered. So we set out to verify. A THV 11 viewer emailed us and asked, how does the Arkansas Department of Health determine COVID-19 recovery rates? So many people have long lasting side effects. They are not recovered simply based on a set number of days after testing positive. Our source, the Arkansas Department of Health. A spokesperson explains after a 10 day isolation period after the onset of symptoms or from the date of a test, if a patient is asymptomatic, a nurse will call the patient. If the patient reports not having a fever for at least a day and the symptoms are improving, the patient will be marked as recovered. But what happens if the person doesn't answer the phone? According to ADH, that person will be marked as recovered after 14 days of the first sign of symptoms, unless they've been admitted to the hospital or are deceased. So if someone's COVID-19 side effects are significant enough to require hospitalization, that person would not automatically be classified as recovered. Remember folks, we are here to help you out during this pandemic. If you have a question or something you want verified, just email us thv11.com or you can reach out directly to me on social media. Well, today was day two of virtual learning for many families across Arkansas. As this unusual school year gets going, THV 11's Mercedes McKay spoke with parents about the victories and the hiccups they're experiencing while trying to learn from home. Like you said, it's only been less than 48 hours, so the parents I spoke to that are having difficulties understand there will be kinks to smooth out. I caught up with four different parents with four different experiences on how day two of virtual learning is treating their family. I just can't stress enough how seamless it has been for her. For Letitia Whitfield and her ninth grade daughter Jordan, virtual learning has gone perfectly much to their surprise. I actually did think that there were gonna be challenges just because of the nature of the beast. What's been a walk in the park for the Whitfields has been a completely different story in the Gray's household. Virtual learning has been kind of a non-starter. Mother of a fifth and sixth grader, Corey Gray, says the past two days have been filled with confusion because there's no content to work with. You can click on the class, but there are no assignments, no lectures. We, d we don't know of anything she's supposed to be doing today, so she they're just hanging out at the house with my parents. On the flip side, Christine Kemener's experience falls somewhere in the middle. I figured there'd be a lot of technical issues, but um, on our end, it, there really wasn't. She says everything ran smoothly for her third grade daughter, Zaylee, except when it came to electives like gym and art. She was just really confused. She couldn't really hear what was going on, um, didn't really know what to do. Not wanting to take any chances, Russ Boggs went a different route with his four children after dealing with difficulties virtually in the spring. I wanted to be as smooth as possible, and I saw this as the smoothest route for my family. Pulling his kids out of their district and enrolling them in Arkansas Virtual Academy, which he describes as being nothing but positive. They're navigating with, with no problem. It is very kid friendly. I did ask all four parents after hearing how in person classes went at their schools if they wish they had gone that route. All of them said they believe they made the best decision for their family. For THV 11, I'm Mercedes McKay. More help is on the way for rural communities still struggling with internet connectivity. The governor announced today another $100 million will go toward expanding high speed broadband in rural areas of the state. 
7 million of that will go to the Arkansas Rural Connect program, which will go directly to cities and internet providers to expand and improve service in those areas. President Donald Trump's family took center stage during night two of the Republican National Convention. Natalie Brand has a recap from Washington. First Lady Melania Trump delivered a very personal appeal to voters in the newly renovated Rose Garden at the White House. How proud I will be to cast my vote again for Donald this November. We must make sure that women are heard and that the American dream continues to thrive. It's a family affair on night two, with President Trump's daughter Tiffany and his son Eric also making a case for their father's re-election. My father ran not because he needed the job, but because he knew hardworking people across this great country were being left behind. Republicans of all walks of life also weighed in, from a Minnesota dairy farmer to former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, resurrecting disputed claims about the Biden family's ties to Ukraine. A corrupt Ukrainian oligarch? put Hunter on the board of his gas company, even though he had no experience in Ukraine or in the energy sector, none. President Trump made more surprise appearances Tuesday night, including holding a naturalization ceremony for immigrants to become U.S. citizens. America rejoices as we welcome five absolutely incredible new members into our great American family. One of the headliners, Secretary Mike Pompeo, is drawing criticism from congressional Democrats and former diplomats for his appearance for breaking precedent by giving a convention speech as the sitting U.S. Secretary of State. I'm Mike Pompeo. Secretary Pompeo taped his remarks from Jerusalem Monday during an official trip to Israel. Just two weeks ago, the president brokered a historic peace deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. This is a deal that our grandchildren will read about in their history books. Secretary Pompeo sent this cable to diplomats last month, reminding them that it's State Department policy that employees may not engage in partisan political activity, even on personal time. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. All right, some dates to keep in mind. The deadline to request an absentee ballot here in Arkansas is October 27th. COVID-19 concerns are a valid excuse this year to request one. Early voting starts October 19th, and the general election, just a reminder, is on November 3rd.